New York, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Spark Summit East. Brought to you by Spark Summit. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Vellante with George Gilbert. We're here live at Spark Summit East in New York City, Midtown Manhattan at the Hilton. The home of uh, really, you know, Hadoop World really started here, uh, and so it kind of feels like we're going back to the geeky days of uh, early days of Hadoop World and Hadoop Summits. But uh, at any rate, it's our pleasure to have Sean Conley here as the Vice President of Corporate Strategy at Horton Works. Sean, always a pleasure to see you. George, Welcome Dave, back. appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. So last time we saw you, at least as part of theCUBE, was you were kind enough to participate in a panel that we had at our event, Big Data NYC, which we run concurrent to Strata. You stole the show, you really did a great job, I think, representing the big data community. <laughs> well, you have a lot of insight and you're, you're articulate and, and it was good. So, so give us the update, what's, what's new since, uh, since that time frame? I mean, a lot's happened. We've got, gotten through our first fiscal year uh, reporting, so we are proud to uh, you know, bust it through. The, you know, we were 122 million uh, revenue for 2015, so just a little over four years in. Um, we set really strong guidance for uh, 2016. And uh, I know B uh, Rob Bearden was quoted on saying, you know, make no bones about it, we're looking to you know, drive to that adjusted EBITDA break even point um, Q4 this year, so we actually moved up expectations. Um, from a, so from a business perspective, uh, scaling pretty well, running around 75 to 80% uh, software subscriptions versus services, so uh, um, actually we, we achieved that point uh, uh, probably a little earlier. Um, than we anticipated and, and that kind of stuff, but that's good. I mean, it just means there's appetite and uh, need for uh, you know, the software we're doing, we, either directly or indirectly. Um, we're here at Spark Summit, so you know, I think one of the things, uh, you know, I, I had about you know, 10 minutes or so when I was talking, I was really just talking about, uh, uh, since I've been in open source for probably about 12 years, early days, JBoss and stuff, it's, you know, how do you make that, how do you make really great innovative tech consumable by the enterprise, and I think that was, and why should they care? And that was a bit of the theme of what I covered. Yeah, so talk a little bit more about, about where we've come. So like I said, in the early days, it was all about sort of attacking the cost equation, mm -hmm. maybe and then evolved into coming up with a better data warehouse solution with a lot more data. We killed sampling. Um, where are we headed now? Where does Spark fit into this, you know, collection of assets that we've now built up over the last decade. Yep, so like I said, there's a lot of technologies in a broader data architecture. Um, so when I look at the market, I look at it from a platforms perspective, data at rest and data in motion platforms, and you bring them together and you can actually create really innovative new uh, analytic driven apps, right? Smart applications. Um, if you look at, uh, and it's interesting to see where the center of gravity is uh, versus like, you know, if you look at early web, right, you had, uh, you know, Red Hat went public in 99, you had Linux clearly was on the scene, Apache HTTP server was established in 99, Apache uh, Software Foundation was established there. And there was a really strong center of gravity at that point. You look now and Apache's actually serving a very similar role as it relates to, you know, data, right? So uh, Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, a lot of innovation happening uh, there. And, and, you know, it's, it's moving very fast and how do you actually harness that uh, for uh, you know, enter mainstream enterprise, right? Um, for the uh, early majority and late majority adopters. Um, from my perspective, uh, you know, I think it's exciting to see we're we're seeing a lot of those types of use cases that aren't just tech enthusiast type, uh, you know, uh, applications. And so I used a few examples. Uh, you know, Web Trends was a really great high scale one where they're running uh, Spark and Hadoop. Uh, all in the same sort of shared multi-tenant uh, HTTP uh, platform. But um, I also uh, used an example of a, um, uh, basically a train company, right? So I was like, this isn't just about web monsters, right? It's, you know, the train doctor capturing, uh, you, know, uh, vi uh, you know, video feeds and images of the track so they could detect um, faults and go back and make sure they're doing ma maintenance. You know, I was on New Jersey Transit. It was a little bumpy ride, so they probably should run the train doctor over that, tra <laughs> you know, over that track. Um, but th they're very much, you know, 
want to do it from a logistics perspective, if it's the trains delivering uh, stuff, but also just from a uh, safety, right? Yeah. Well, and who would think, you know, sort of a, you know, a hundred plus year old business is actually uh, participate in the age of data, right. um, and they are. So, you're actually a good person to ask this question uh, because you see so many different use cases. We've been working on this premise that one of the big problems that companies are trying to solve around big data is the problems of better understanding demand. The demand profile's changing. As, as information becomes disseminated, we all have information about pricing and, and product quality. We see reviews on Amazon. And you know, as consumers, we're really informed. And it seems like data is a way for the brands to learn more about us and so they can attack that problem of demand. Um, first of all, is that a you know, reasonable premise that these brands are trying to get that, regain that competitive advantage? Not only against competitors, but I guess in a way against the consumer. Consumers are so knowledgeable today. Yeah. Um, is that a valid sort of premise that that is a big problem that people are trying to attack? Well, it's, you know, that's a classic single view of customer initiative and we see that yeah. in spades, right? Um, but, uh, and one of the points I made in my keynote is uh, geolocation, like there's, there's pivot points and center of gravities and, and or things that will drive innovative new apps, right? So um, entity resolution analytics is great for single view of customer and things like that. Um, if you have multiple Sean Conleys have gone in the store, am I the same one so you can rationalize it right. down the one? Mm -hmm. But geolocation's another one, right? Is everything has a GPS location. And that train analogy is, you know, the the lengths of track are captured and their GPS location is captured and very much analytics around the location of faulty track and can you infer other issues. Maybe there might be other issues on um, you know, water, weather, or what have you that might be causing uh, faults. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting problem to address and that, that requires a lot of data at rest to do really deep machine learning against, but it also is uh, benefits from you know, analytics against the, the real-time stream and uh, data in motion. And that combination of being able to you know, uh, play the two off of each other in a closed loop uh, application is, uh, is really where people are trying to go. Your, your point on where is the market, right? Yeah, it started on renovate, right? Uh, cost savings, right? Active archive, ETL on board, and richer data warehouse, data marts. Um, the more interesting applications are really around the data discovery, right? So the Web Trends example was their Web Trends Explorer product is very much a self-service discovery platform for their end users. So they can have pre-built analytics as part of the Web Trends experience, but they have a place to actually get down and dirty with the data, and they're monetizing that as a new revenue stream. Mm -hmm. I find that fascinating, right? Um, single view, single view of customer, single view of property, right, in insurance industry. What's your risk exposure when uh, weather patterns or global events happen in a particular area? That's a geolocation-centric uh, app, if you will. Um, so it, it's changing how we think about that app space and then clearly predictive analytics, you know, real time and, you know, intelligent is where the nirvana. But there's all these steps along that journey. Right, and well, right? I mean, and that was the nirvana, nirvana of decision support, right? And I, I often tell people that one of the problems that big data you know, helped solve was, first of all, it, it attacked the cost problem with mm -hmm. data warehousing. And, and it's, it, its promise now is, we will give you that 360 degree view of the customer, that you know, customer of one, that personalized view. So you're optimistic that big data will live up to that promise. Well, I, I think it's redefining certain uh, uh, application areas and industries like cybersecurity, threat intrusion, that's, that, you know, that's yeah. undergoing a, a significant transformation because you, you, know, you can't rely on you know, small sampling or manual steps in the process. It's just, there are too many inbound, right? You have to automate that, it has to be based off of machine learning and it has to be self-adjusting models, right? And so that changes how you think about that space. Um, in, the, um, you know, in the single view of customer, the next logical steps after that is, how can you use that intelligence to actually optimize your supply chain and your distribution channels, right? And so that's going to wash through and that's going to transform a lot of those traditional industries. So in that um, cyber example, um, the innovation seems would come from both in, in improving the models, the self-adjusting models, and also the ability to deal with more data. Yep. 
right? Yeah. And, and those are sometimes like a tug of war, right? If I have to spend all my time getting data, cleaning data, I don't have enough time to improve those algorithms. Yeah. How do you see customers dealing with that challenge? Well, it's, it's funny is, uh, so in December, uh, Hortonworks, we, int we uh, actually, uh, it was right before the holidays, so I'm not sure many people saw it. We uh, incubated a new project at Apache called Apache Metron. So it's an incubating project. Oh, that was the geo. Um, so that is the, uh, this is a cybersecurity oh. uh, framework. And so it, it makes use of a lot of these uh, technologies. Um, Kafka, NiFi for uh, getting the data. Um, you know, um, Storm for a lot of the rapid, rapid ingest, like 1.2 million uh, uh, events per second type uh, speeds. Um, Spark definitely for uh, some of the streaming, but also the modeling use cases. Um, HBase for immediate delivery of uh, network packets that are captured, and so you can actually interrogate the system. And so it's this uh, cybersecurity acceleration layer, right, that has uh, eventing and dashboarding um, on top. And, and that uh, Cisco and Hortonworkers probably over the prior 15 months uh, collaborated in an uh, open source project called OpenSOC, mm -hmm. System Operation Center. That basically got contributed to Apache as Metron. Would it um, be and fair? So that's a canonical sort of new yeah. generation application, right? And so um, it's complicated, um, but it's a lot of these, whether it's connected car use cases, they have very similar patterns on what's required of the data architecture, right? Um, and so, uh, there's sort of these greenfield areas that we're really actively interested in helping to forge ahead to accelerate yeah. uh, those. The automobile is a data platform. That's uh, it, uh, it's um, <laughs> it's basically an iPad with wheels. Yeah. <laughs> is how I joke, right? Yeah. You know, it's amazing, right? <laughs> a question on this: it, um, the, it was Metron. Mm -hmm. the, so, how, what are the steps to go from, you know, a custom solution to an accelerator? Um, to something that's you know pretty repeatable, where in the software world we'd be like 85% sort of software, 15% professional services. How does what has to happen for that to evolve? And well, it's it's a it's an emerging framework. There's still a lot of work to be done there. Um, there's definitely uh, uh, participation from broader community of interest. There's a lot of people who want to solve that cyber uh, issue for themselves, right? As they're sort of uh, renovating their, how they do think of SOC, you know, the, you know their system, uh, their security, uh, you know, concerns. Um, so it's it's definitely early, but I use that as, and I, uh, you know, I put it back to Arun Murthy and some of the work workers in there is that application. I think is a great you know uh, architecture. We need to make it 10 to 100x easier to deploy it, right? And so. I get excited about the convergence of uh, things like containers and others that will help us wire assemblies together of these types of applications for this new era, right? So there has to be a lot of investment in going, you can, you can enable the art of the possible at scale, petabyte scale, um, at extreme uh, inbound. How do you make that repeatable, right? How do you make that architecture repeatable? So 2016, 17 is from my perspective, I just want to you know, dial it in and try and make those types of architectures repeatable. But is that, are you, when you talk about containers, um, that would go across apps. Are you talking yeah. about, so you've got the app itself, but the process of sort of deploying it and keeping it up to date is the part that's the hard part now? Yeah, so I mean, if you, if you look at the Metron architecture, and I'm just using that as an yeah. example, is um, there's uh, Storm logic, there's Kafka logic, there's HBase logic, there, so it's not app. Right, it's it's um, it's it's a composition of apps. Oh, right, oh, oh. it's the modern data applications. Right, for in this case the context of cybersecurity and threat uh, detection. Um, so there's a, a variety of apps all running concurrently. Right, some are high speed, others are doing deep dive analytics on a recurring basis. Right, and so you know that's a that's the predictive analytics. That's the journey everybody wants to get to. And if you want to enable that, you, you have to enable these assemblies of multiple services and application logic to easily be packaged and deployed, right? Not only for commercial off the shelf, right, but for anybody who's building it custom, right? We're okay. seeing both, that's great. I think you, th you basically throw gas on the fire if you can crack that nut of how do you package one of these modern apps, okay. if that makes sense. 
Yeah, and, and yeah. I mean, in terms of, you know, the commercial off the shelf apps, I mean, I think Mike Olson five years ago said this is going to be the year of the app, and, yep. and, and it never happened. I mean, it's, would you agree that most of the activities today is still around custom apps, is that fair? Or? Um, no, I, actually, I think there's very targeted applications. I wouldn't underestimate the sort of the active archive and the data enrichment and data discovery apps. Um, they're tighter mm -hmm. in scope on what they accomplish. They actually drive real value. In some cases, they can unlock new revenue streams. But the ultimate nirvana of a fully closed loop system that can do 10 years of history as well as you know, uh, give you analytics in the here and now on what's actively streaming, um, that's, that's a closed loop yeah. system, right? And um, the cool thing is a lot of the technologies are here, mm -hmm. right? Now what we need to do is we need to actually, like I said, drive that 10 to 100x easier factor. Yeah, we kind of heard that in this morning's keynote. Is the, the good news is we've, we've solved a lot of the technical problems. Mm -hmm. You know, adoption now and, and the learning curve for developers. Is and, and the journey, as I like to call it, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, you can't just go for that brass ring as your first <laughs> right, <laughs> thing. It's like you need to assemble the data and, and the other things. And you can actually have apps along the way that drive value for the business. In that web trends example, it was, I, sh I showed the journey of their multiple use cases that ultimately led to a lot of these innovative new ones, right? And that's all sourcing out of a, you know, a, a a consistent data architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's sort of the, the question, or the what we're trying to understand, which is the path to packaged apps. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's not a black or white thing. You take progressive steps. The container part sounds like it's on the the life cycle, the part of the life cycle where it's deploy and keep up to date. Right. But before that, you still have to get to the some sort of you know common data model and how stuff how everything puts data in and gets it out. Yeah. Um, well, and I would say, I guess I would encourage you when you say packaged apps, look at the world of SaaS uh, applications, right? So you have the true cars of the world, the Spotify's, yeah. right, the web trends and others. Yeah. Are they not packaged applications? Yes, yeah, they, they are. All right, oh, actually. Totally. Are they not modern right. data applications? Yes, they're, yes they're, they are. There are new types right. of packaged apps. Exactly, that, right, that so there's not one way to the think about traditional quote, category. packaged app. Yeah, you're In right fact, on. And so there are a lot, there are a lot more than we're giving credit for. Yeah, I guess right. is my point. coming from places that okay. Yeah. wouldn't, okay. not exactly. necessarily from the technology industry. No, it's it's the, the business. It's the doers, right? The app that is the business. Yeah. The data is the business, right? And so, that's what I say, that's what I mean truly by modern data application, okay. right? Is, right. Um, and so, uh, you know, let's not look at it from a five to ten year ago world or prior, right? There's innovative. We interact with it. On your phone, you're interacting with innovative data apps right. all the time. Right. Right. So. All right, Sean, we have to leave it there. Thanks very yep. much for coming. I appreciate the awesome time. seeing all you right. as always. Yep. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. Spark Summit East. This is theCUBE. We're live from Manhattan. Right back. <laughs>